What's up guys, Derek here from DaysDesigns.com back with part three for our mascot logo tutorial. In the previous video, showed you guys how I vector my designs in Adobe Illustrator. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys a quick and easy way to uh, create like a simple presentation image or you know, just like a cool looking image to display your artwork and your logo design on. Whether you wanna post it on social media like Twitter, or Instagram, or you know, something you can also throw up in your portfolio. Um, and also some helpful techniques on, uh, you know, just to create an awesome design. So we're going to start off with our design in, uh, in Adobe Illustrator. And, you know, once we've gone ahead and you know, make sure everything is vectored and good to go, or sorry, not vectored, but uh, grouped together, we're going to push Command C to copy, and we're going to go over to Photoshop. And then we're going to, um, so yeah, <laughs> before we do that, I'm going to be basically recreating this, that logo design. This was another logo design I created pretty nice looking shark logo but anyways I'm basically gonna be creating this uh, kind of format right here very simple format so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this but anyways yeah so we copied now we're gonna paste by pushing command V that's how you paste and then bam now we got that guy in here so anyways I'm actually gonna create a new file so um, all right so lion tutorial uh, presents all right, so I'm gonna go to a thousand by a thousand. Feel free to bump this up if you want. I usually just use a thousand by a thousand. It works for Instagram, for Twitter. So I use those, um, and yeah, 72, everything's good to go. Uh, RGB, etc. All right, so again, Command V, we're gonna paste that guy in here. Put it about there, that's good. You can make it smaller or larger. It all depends, um, you know, whatever you like. So yeah, I'm simply gonna click these colors uh, that we use for a logo because they're gonna be, again, used for our color palette uh, for this and you know how to create it so I'm gonna put the background on whatever color generally speaking I would use this color I may just use the orange just to be a bit different um, but it kind of looks a bit too much so I don't know I wouldn't be bad white wouldn't be bad I usually just use this color a lot just because it looks pretty good or I mean the uh, the outline color um, all right, so yeah, so next up, I usually make a gradient and a gradient that fades from black to white. So we gotta make sure we click on black right here. So click on black, and then I'm gonna go to this one right here, foreground to transparent. Uh, I believe putting this on reverse right here. And uh, yeah, so also I'm gonna put click and drag a nice guideline to the middle. But yeah, push G on our keyboard, go back to the gradient. I'm gonna use the circle one one where um, you know instead of it being like straight across straight across it's like circle it's uh, radial instead of being linear so uh, I usually start from the middle and then just go out to about here and again this uh, you know this is just to add some more uh, I guess style and also just to uh, really stop people from uh, stealing quote unquote some of your designs and like you know throwing it into Adobe Illustrator and simply just like snatching it up by like, doing the live trace and everything uh, so yeah, so now that we threw that over, I'm probably I'm gonna put it on. I'm gonna leave it on normal, and then I'm push erase or push the E on my keyboard for the eraser. Shrink this eraser down a little bit, zoom out, and then I'm gonna get erasing, just to erase some of it, just so not all of it's hidden. And uh, yeah, so you know we could also duplicate this and do an overlay, and that usually you know makes the colors pop a bit more, um, like overlays. And use an overlay but anyways yeah so next up I'm going to create a simple highlight layer just like an overlay for a brush uh, yeah just for just for a bit of insight I kind of got this from um, from Fraser Davidson Davidson it's like a great way to um, you know just make the process harder for someone to steal your work so basically just put a white brush over top of that um, you know you can do normal you can do whatever like usually I'll do normal maybe put it on 15 and then do another layer, make that one a bit smaller. Put that one on overlay, make sure it's centered. Put that one on overlay and that just adds a bit more, uh, it brightens up the color without adding the shade, without adding white to it. So as you can see, that's what our overlay did. And then this is what our white did. So maybe I'll bring this down to seven. And uh, yeah, bring down this guy a little bit rather just expand it all the way until it reaches the edge so yeah and really guys this is all personal preference you don't even have to do this uh, this way you know I'm just doing it this way just to do it again I kind of think it looks cool 
Um, so yeah, I've been doing it. You know, before I knew the reasoning behind it, I always thought it looked cool, so I would just emulate this anyway. Whoops. So yeah, again, now I'm just making it uh, more to my liking. And again, you can go deeper with these effects. You can do more, you can do less. Um, you know, like these are pretty dark, so like the overlay, you know, I could put this on like 50 and then um, put the, uh, or sorry, they're both on overlay. Okay, the normal is supposed to be on the bottom. So put the normal on 50 and then the overlay on 50, then it's not so extreme, but even just with the normal layer, it looks fine. It looks pretty good. Again, it's just kind of an intriguing way. Uh, also, I've seen that you can do another gradient layer on top of everything. And I'll just add like a color layer over top of it. So we put it back to the linear gradient, go from left to right, overlay, put it on usually about 23 or something. And again, this just distorts the color a little bit and again, makes it harder for someone to like live trace our uh, image right here. Sometimes it can ruin the color. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm gonna leave it off actually. Um, if I was to leave it on, I'd probably change this orange to uh, like a blue, an actual blue. Maybe not that bright, but maybe something like that. Throw it back over, but it doesn't look so great. I wanna keep the color. So anyways, yeah, this doesn't really matter. Um, I won't be selling this or anything like that. So, and then lastly, what I usually do is I'll duplicate this. So, um, you know, simply duplicate this logo just for backup. And then I get the question of why are my logos blurred? It's usually just because it makes it a lot harder or decently harder to live trace in Adobe uh, Illustrator. Obviously, you can still do it if you really know what you're doing, but you know, if you do it regardless, it's kind of, uh, yeah, uh, no need to throw out any file language here. But anyway, so, um, so yeah, I usually use uh, the tilt shift for the blur. So anyways, make sure you're uh, selected your logo layer and obviously you can already see the blurs. Again, originally, I just thought it looked super awesome when I seen the blur, it just, you know, makes it more intriguing and also, you can really play with people like make them you know you make them focus on certain things and ignore certain things so like when something is blurred we tend to ignore it and when something <clears throat> excuse me is in focus we tend to focus on that like it, it really draws the eye in and the same thing with the uh, overall overlay the black overlay and even the white highlight so it makes your eyes kind of go kind of wander up here and um, you know if we were to like increase it in the blur a little bit more um, you know, you could do it simply like this. Um, so that's one way to do it. And then another great blur that I used to use a lot, I believe it's the iris blur, and that's where everything outside of the circle is blurred. And obviously you can manipulate this circle by holding Alt, or you actually you don't have to hold Alt. But this is just another alternative for doing that. You know, you can just really have fun, uh, you know, doing this as long as you don't overdo it. And if you hold Alt, or sorry, hold Option, or yeah, hold Alt or Option, and then click and drag, you know, that's a great way to bring in certain these certain dots. You can do that on the other one as well. So, you know, you could end it off with something like that. And, you know, it's just really, it's just really intriguing. And uh, if I was to do this, I can't exactly do it because I got some stuff on my desktop that you guys can't see. But, um, but yeah, so anyways, if I was to, you know, screenshot this, throw it in Adobe Illustrator and do a quick live trace, you would notice that, um, you know, like these edges right here would be, there would be just tons of pixels and, you know, someone would literally have to take the time and go in and pretty much recreate it like we did, which doesn't take that long, but um, yeah, hopefully it just, you know, steers some people away from, uh, you know, doing things they really shouldn't be doing. Um, so yeah, guys, that's pretty much that. Again, that adds some contrast and you can all, oh wait, here's another good thing since we're here. It's only nine minutes. Hopefully this video is not too long for you guys. It is, that's unfortunate to hear, but I hope you guys do enjoy it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna highlight all of our, uh, our added layers, you know, our brushes and everything. I'm just gonna expand those a little bit. And um, so this can be kind of complicating right here, but I'm gonna click and drag, make sure, I'm gonna duplicate those, sorry, below our, uh, our line and then all the ones that are above it. I'm gonna highlight all of those and then right click, create clipping mask, and then they're all clipped onto this. So if I hide those, you can see the difference. And then what this does, this gives us the opportunity to combine all of the things behind it and uh, usually try to help get rid of these, um, I can't remember what they're called, but these like lines, these rays right here. So I'm gonna uh, duplicate everything by pushing Command J, pushing Command E, and that's how you combine everything. So now if I was to hide all of these, and then we just have the one that we combine, as you can see, it's all on one layer. So then what I do is go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, 
and I usually turn it up a lot, not 50, but even on 50, as you can see, those rays are all gone. Usually 15 will do the trick, um, you know, at this size. And as you can see, it's super duper clean. There's barely any rays. And uh, yeah, it just looks even better. You know, you can always add, um, you know, some noise into it. Uh, this is something else that I've seen. I think it looks really cool. I still don't know why people do it, but I just think it looks awesome, right? So, you know, you can just add some noise. Do whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, I would say don't overdo it. Um, you know, add your personality into it. Obviously, you know, you can put some, like, marks in the background. I used to overdo it. Not overdo it, but just do it a lot more. But now I kind of keep it simple like this. I just think it looks uh, a lot cleaner, and it's also a lot quicker to create. Um, so yeah guys, that's basically how I create a basic presentation image for one logo design. Um, obviously this isn't a presentation image regarding like send, something to send to your clients, but I'm saying like if you want to post it on social media, this could be a cool way to do it. Otherwise, you know, you could simply just create the same background and you know, not use the blur or whatever. You know, just do whatever you guys want to do with this. It's something I use, I still use, and still love to use. And uh, yeah, so when I post this, I'm actually gonna use this image. But anyways, again, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on creating presentation images and also the mascot logo tutorial series overall. This has been video three and this will probably be the last video of this series. If you guys have any other requests or any other things like that, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. If you have enjoyed this series, be sure to leave a big thumbs up, guys. Again, it is Derek from daysdesigns.com, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.